Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob Stacey. You're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment, and our guest is Peter Green. Uh, he's a brain cancer survivor and author of the book My Cancer Journey, and he also founded WorkoutThroughCancer.com. Welcome to the show, Peter. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate you guys having me on. So I want to give everybody some background on Peter. He is from Westport, Connecticut originally. After attending Seattle University, he spent two years with the Peace Corps in West Africa, then launched a successful career in print and digital media with McGraw-Hill, Institutional Investor, and Weather.com. He's back living in his hometown with his wife, Mary, and two dogs, Max and Louie. He's also the proud father of a now-grown son, Benjamin. As Bob mentioned, he is the author of My Cancer Journey from Discovery to Recovery and his recently launched business, Workout Through Cancer. Thanks again. Tell us a little bit about My Cancer Journey, your story. Thanks, Stacey. So My Cancer Journey, uh, I was diagnosed with brain cancer in 2005. So the good news is it's 13 years later and, and I'm still here. Um, when I was diagnosed with uh, my brain cancer, it was um, obviously, an, you know, obviously a very scary moment for me and my family. Uh, but 13 years later, post-treatment and getting back into my life, I finally left a career in my digital media uh, world. And it was at that time I said to my wife, you know, I, I can't keep doing what I've been doing. And I really felt compelled to write my book, My Cancer Journey, because I wanted to share the exercises that I developed in 2005 with those that were going through their own cancer journeys. And really because these are the exercises that I strongly believe, along with the great doctors at Sloan, allowed me to survive my cancer and to still be here today. But once I started to write the book about the exercises, all the emotions I, I really think I withheld and, you know, post-cancer um, and just went back to my life came rushing back into me about the discovery of my disease, transitioning from one world into being a cancer patient, the effects personally on my life, my family's life, my son's life. And so it just became a much larger project, which hopefully also is, is a compelling for people, both, you know, cancer uh, going through their treatment, post-treatment, and family members because it's all those feelings and emotions that happen once you hear the words, we found something. So that's, mm-hmm. that's where the book came from. And then from the book, I also then, you know, launched my business and just took it to the next step. Wow. So uh, we were talking before our interview today. I have a friend that was recently diagnosed with cancer. She's a runner. And um, even through her treatments, she's typically running not every day because sometimes she's just wiped out. But she told me she was burning something like, it was like an astronomical number, 4,000 calories a day because of like the medications and stuff. Like, is it good to work out still when you have all these different kind of chemicals inside you? You know what? It's It's a great question. Obviously, you should always, you know, talk to your... Uh, doctor before you mm-hmm. do anything, you know, that that's going to, you know, uh, affect your body. But as I say, look, people know, you know your body better than anyone else. When I was diagnosed in 2005, they weren't even talking about exercising and treatment, but I too was very active physically. I, you know, was a triathlon, a triathlete, mm-hmm. and I knew, I knew when I came home being a single dad, that when I came home from my first chemotherapy, which, again, I was in a clinical trial. It was very intensive uh, chemotherapy. They'd keep me in the hospital for four days, making sure that that actually the chemotherapy didn't damage my kidneys. That's what they were very concerned about. But when I came home, I literally collapsed on my couch for around 12 Mm -hmm. hours. But I knew I had to move, and that's where the start of these exercises came from, where, you know, I said, I got to do something. I got to move my body. And, you know, laying down, I lowered myself down onto the floor, and I just started to do a stretch. And once Mm -hmm. I started to do that stretch, I just felt something trigger inside me that started my blood to flow, 
And, you know, from there I built up other exercises, very core meditative, that I could do in my home, which is really critical. But regarding your friend, I would say you know what your body can do, whether the, uh, you know, now they say actually chemotherapy works better for people if they exercise um, Mm -hmm. while in treatment. It actually runs through your system better. So I can't. Mm. I can't speak to the medical specifics regarding what she's burning, but mm-hmm. if it makes her feel both physically and, more importantly, mentally strong, what she's always been mm-hmm. doing and loved, you know, I mm-hmm. would think that's a positive uh, aspect of what she's doing. Wow, interesting. So, how? So you have this other business, workout through cancer. Yep. How do you deliver that? Like, can somebody in California do that? Absolutely. So, so like I said, from the book came the business because as I was mm-hmm. writing this, and I've never done this before. I never, I really don't consider myself a writer. I more of a storyteller. And mm-hmm. um, in addition, you know, launching a business. And so I said, you know, not only did I do, you know, in the book I describe the exercises. We have pictures of me doing them and describing the benefits of them because I've. In writing the book, I work with my uh, medical advisory team, and so they've been qualified. They're actually oncologists approved. One of the things that, so I started to think, you know what, why wouldn't I also build a company that provides the tools, the equipment that people can use in order to do these exercises? And so I, over the past year, went through all the different processes of launching my company. It's an LLC. And really what we do, we built out a site that provides the, what we call our fitness pack. And it, it is where people can come into the site and purchase a fitness pack that can be delivered to someone who is going through their cancer treatment. And in the kit, we call it, there's a yoga mat, there is a four-pound weight ball, a two-pound Pilates ball, two different stretch bands, and a squeeze ball, and, and when you think about it, um, you know, people going through cancer, your friend, you know, very much so, come in different stages, right? Some are stage two, stage three, stage four, even stage mm-hmm. five. And so these exercises are very adaptive. They can be done sitting up. They can be done laying down. And the real purpose is to do something to keep your body active both physically and mentally, um, to, to, to do this. And so when I look at these exercises, they did three specific things for me, and I'm convinced they will do for others. First, physically they will keep you stronger as you go through your treatment. That is for sure and very important. Second, mm-hmm. they will give you a sense of control. When people are going through cancer, often they feel a lack of control. The doctors, they just look at the doctors, and typically there's more than one and they feel a lack of control. These exercises gave me a sense of control. Now I saw myself literally as part of my treatment, along with the great doctors. I was participating in it. And third, and most important, they kept my family, my friends, my 10-year-old son's world from imploding because they saw I was engaged and I was Mm -hmm. determined not to let this defeat me. So for me, those were really the three powerful moments. And so, yes, on the site, uh, people can go in. We have these kits available. We price them at $99. And think about it. When most people get cancer, you, friends, and family say, how can I help? And typically mm-hmm. it's going to be fruit basket, or I'll cook you a meal, flowers, right. whatever. <laughs> typically those things don't help you going through cancer. In fact, many of those things are things that cancer patients can't even eat the types of food you might be delivering. Them. They're all perishable goods where I say, you know, and plus, a fruit basket can cost $134, $80, mm-hmm. $90. This is something that's not perishable. It's a tool that can actually help them and hopefully give them a better chance to survive the treatment and, and beyond. Hmm. We also wow, have, so for, Yep, I'm sorry. Go ahead, I, Stacey. I was just going to remind people, for anybody listening, that the website where people can go and uh, buy that product that you just talked about is workoutthroughcancer.com. So you can yep. continue. Yeah, and also there, we, we, don't leave, we don't leave people just in a lurch there. There's a uh, USB drive or a DVD that they can, mm-hmm. you know, literally learn how to do the exercise. They also will start to do streaming video classes that people can participate in. 
um, and, you know, see me doing the exercises uh, right through the site. For, for me, the really important thing and, and what I've learned, because this has been a second journey for me in writing the book and starting the company, um, when I first got diagnosed, I did not take part in any form of support groups. I was lucky enough to have a large family, um, and I got a lot of support for them. But in writing the book and launching the company, I did go back, and I started to participate in cancer support groups. I wanted to hear, you know, 12 years later what people were saying. And, you know, for me, I was humbled hearing their stories, hearing how they were fighting. And I also started to recognize that cancer patients really need to talk to cancer patients. They feel comfortable talking to someone who is going through this, even because it's a very different world that you're entering, and it's hard even for friends and family to understand some of those inner feelings that that are going through you. And so um, the site that I developed also is full of very rich content, video intensive of people, cancer people, sharing their stories. So you can go to the site and hear cancer currently in treatment and Mm post-treatment talking about what I consider really the five factors. One is discovery about, Mm -hmm. you know, how did you discover your cancer? The second one is fear, which is consistent. I even find now that post-cancer treatment people are more fearful than in treatment because they're so terrified it's going to come back. I talk about transition, Mm -hmm. transitioning from the world you always knew and lived in and for the most part was safe to being pulled out of that into now a world of a cancer world and understanding you're never going to be able to go back to that other world. And then we talk about support and we talk about control, all these issues that both the person going through cancer is feeling and also the co-survivors being family and friends. I'm just curious, which it really has nothing to do with the book, but how do you view your cancer diagnosis now, do you look at it that it was a blessing? I say it's a, it's, it's a, no one's asked me that question. Because um, you've changed lives yeah. because of it. Yes, so. I, I do. You know, I, I, actually, I actually felt, and I talk about this a little bit in the book, I never felt so alive than when I was going through my treatment. Everything was mm-hmm. heightened to a level that is, I haven't regained. And I will say that now, you know, when I started to write the book and that feeling that, you know, the book became something larger with regards to outside of the exercises, and I do feel, I said to my wife, you know, I can never go back to doing what I've done. This is now Mm -hmm. a passion of mine that, you know, I, I can't turn away from. Wow, awesome stuff. Uh, We only have a couple of minutes left. Any other advice for, let's just say for a family member, somebody has somebody going through, somebody in their life going through cancer, any other words of advice you have for people like family? On on the family side, yes. I think that I, I understand that family members are going through their own transition now loved mm-hmm. ones of theirs are in a spot where, you know, they're afraid of being the family member. They're going through the transition. They're feeling the sense of lack of control because, you know, you, they, the, the person, depending on who they are, you know, a child or a, or a, a sibling or a spouse, you know, their world's transition. So I really um, am sympathetic to those family members, and I would encourage, it might be difficult to talk to your loved one who is going through cancer, but there are ways that you can also get support. And I really Mm -hmm. look at support being a huge factor now because you're not alone, unfortunately. There are millions of people out there that, you know, diagnosed, people being diagnosed by cancer 1.7 1.7 million in America every year, another 1.3 uh, coming out of cancer. So this cycle of 3 million people being affected, but the affected party probably grows by, you know, 10 times because of the family members associated with those 3 million. And right. so unfortunately it is a, you know, epidemic proportion, and with that comes a huge amount of support, and I would 
say to family members to um, go slow, take care of yourself, understand that, you know, though it's going through cancer, are sometimes going to need support from the outside and not just from you. Right. Wow. Great stuff. Uh, Today's interview was Peter Green. His book is My Cancer Journey from Discovery to Recovery, as well as his company, Workout Through Cancer. Peter, where is the best place for people to follow you and to buy the book? So they can go onto my site. We actually are building a community, so I would encourage both friends, family, and obviously those going through their cancer journey to be able to register and sign in because, as I always say, we're better together. Um, But Mm -hmm. they can buy the book on my site. It's also available. There's links directly to Barnes & Noble. Um, There's links to Amazon. And then we have a store where they can purchase the kit. And we have other items there to support people going through cancer. Actually, it's not just support. We have different types of throw blankets because I know going through chemotherapy, you can be chilled and different sweatshirts and gear that they can feel more comfortable in because there are so many different effects that radiation and chemotherapy will, mm-hmm. will you know, kind of have on your system. So, but workouttocancer.com, I encourage them to go participate, tell your story, and become part of the community to really help everyone going through their cancer journey. Wow. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you, Stacey. Thank you, Peter. Thank you Bob. I really appreciate giving me the time to talk. Mm-hmm. Certainly. That's all for this edition of Get Real. Make sure you join us again next weekend for more.